Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Today y Manana. I'm Alex. This is Xavier. We're really excited to have you with us here today. As always, we're presented by Emergent Financial Services. We are powered by Cristel Noel State Farm, and we are partnering with Forward Adelante, the premier Latino networking event group here in Charlottesville, Virginia. So it's a very fun show yeah, it's gonna planned be for, yeah. for everyone today. We have, we're going to have uh, at 1030, it's going to be Stephanie Devara. So she's the owner of Seville Picnic, a really, a really Picnics. unique vis- business. I think when you, when you hear about it, you'll be like, wow, I just Just know. saying the word picnic, right? Just, it exactly. Gives you relaxation and fun and it enjoyment. It has a, a nice right. feel. And when you see what it's about, I think it's really unique. And, um, and then we're going to be followed, that's going to be followed at 1050 by Samantha Strong. She's the manager of the shops at Stonefield. So a very fun place. We'll learn a, a lot about job. that. That's, I mean, there's, well, there's always so much going on there. <laughs> I so think so. So it, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to learn about that. And, and then, of course, we have some de- interesting developments, as Jerry and I were talking uh, the other day on uh, the I Love Seville show. Just especially, I mean, he, we were just reviewing what was happening in the markets. And, of course, two days ago, the U.S. listed Chinese companies were down bit. And it was impacting emerging markets. It was impacting well, a lot yeah, of places. Yeah. And we thought it was worth discussing it and just our thoughts on why that's happening and what we need to be thinking about. I think it offers a good teaching lesson, too, about the purpose of investing and what you should and should not be doing when you invest. And so, I mean, go ahead and I know well, you have some it, thoughts it's, on it's this situation. It's more as a professional investor, right? Um, as an institutional investor, as mm-hmm. an investor for your client's money, you know, there you have fiduciary responsibilities, right? And so we'll discuss why this is important, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, anybody can invest in these companies if you want to, but as a fiduciary, you have to st- take a step back, and we'll explain why. So one of the things, and, and, and really this has been kind of, be, this began to happen sometime in, in February, mm-hmm. um, where the nuances of what was going on in China and the government, what they were doing with respect to companies. And so one of the things we have to remember is that I think it was earlier this year, the, the SEC, which is the Securities and Exchange Commission. So they regulate the stocks that are listed stocks on and, major Stocks and exchanges. investment advisors, et cetera, right? Um, they, they were rolling out rules that basically said, if you do not provide us with financials on the companies that are listed in the exchanges, we will delist you, right? So the Chinese government said, no problem, we will do our own investigation and our give you audit. our own audit and looking at the financials of the companies and we'll give you the results. And quite frankly, the SEC, rightly so, said, no, we no. need to have that done by a, a third, third party, party audit. right? We can't just have you do it and say, here's the results, right? And so that's where the crux of the problem began. I mean, mm-hmm. the Chinese government isn't backing up. And the second thing that happened also is, like, for example, the, they decided that every single company that had, has anything to do with education, this is Chinese companies, mm-hmm. cannot generate a profit, cannot borrow in the markets, right? And so just from that perspective, if, you have, if you're investing in a company, the goal is for that company to make money, and that's how you make mm-hmm. money, right? So if, if they're going not to allow these particular companies to make money, to have profits, then why, you, why, why would, would you invest, invest right? But the biggest future. issue that, that you and I have is, you know, when you invest in companies, one of the things that you have to be aware of is that you can go and take a look at their financials, mm-hmm. see how they're doing. In other words, you know, they may be, they may be tell you that sales are going through a roof, and then you look at the numbers, you say, that's just not true, mm-hmm. right? So you now have a decision that you can make and say, I don't believe that what they're telling us is true mm-hmm. because I see the numbers, and therefore you don't invest in it. Or, yes, it's true, I like this company, I like their product, therefore I invest. Exactly. When you have numbers that are coming out from a government that you know is, you know, let's face it, it's a communist well, it's government, an right? Party, right? Exactly. And if you, normally, when you look at numbers from a U.S. company, it's been audited by a by third, third party, party. By someone not who by that's right, not standard. by the government itself. Exactly, it's not by the government, it's not by the company itself. Exactly, right. So you can you have a reasonable understanding that the numbers you're looking at are accurate. Right, because there's no conflict of interest. That's right. Right, they're and honest. You know, they're they're, they're yeah. verified. Because a third part, someone without a exactly. conflict of interest, has right. verified. Them. Exactly. In this case, the person verifying that what the Chinese companies are telling you is true 
is their own government, which in many cases either owns them or owns part of them. That's right. So you sit there and say, well, that's a conflict of interest. We would never permit that in any other scenario. No. And so and, it and, raises... And you can't invest in something like exactly, that. Exactly, just because you no longer trust those numbers. Exactly, exactly, absolutely. And, it, you know, it's like, it's like you, you going to buy your house, right? Uh, a, a brand new house. And the seller says, you don't have to bring in your engineer. We've got our own engineering report. Don't worry about it, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is good. Everything yeah, is nice and dead. My is a home inspector. Exactly. And do this you wouldn't do that, right? You say, yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. But I'm going to have my own inspector come in and take a look at mm -hmm. it, right? So that's, it's kind of the same concept. In other words, if you are not permitted to take a look at the financials of a corporation, and that doesn't mean, I mean, we invest in many ETFs. That doesn't mean we go out there and, and, and take a look at every single yeah, financial. You're not going to look right? at a thousand, two exactly. thousand companies. But we know that there are one, there are people that are taking a look at that. Two, we know that we can, right? And we mm -hmm. can take a look at what the financials are of certain companies. For some ETFs only have about 20 stocks. So and we can take can, a look at that, right? Which is usually. You know, when you look at the smaller companies is what we do. When you look mm -hmm. in the S&P 500, there's not, you know, obviously, the, the need to look at the financials of those companies is not important, right? Because you know there's, there's a, a large number of people that do research and look at the numbers and you just read the research, right? So, but it's important to know that that's available to you. Exactly. Right? And listen, we're not the only ones. I mean, there's been an enormous exodus out of ETFs that have Chinese companies, right? Well, as there's, we saw on Tuesday. We saw on Tuesday, and I mean, since I think since this month alone, this, this I think there was like over three billion dollars that have come out wow. of the market, because we're not again we're not the only ones that feel that way. I think any investment manager mm -hmm. that is, and any any manager for institutions that that has investments in these particular of mutual funds, ETFs, or individual companies, are going to be sitting back and say, I can no longer. Right? As a fiduciary, say that I know what's going on with this mm -hmm. company and therefore invest in it. And so that's why there's so much divestiture going on exactly. around it's, the globe. It's kind of a double risk, too, because I mean, if they end up getting delisted, you don't how want do to you be stuck it? holding how exactly. you sell it. Exactly. I mean, you're going to have to sell it before it gets delisted at very reduced Price. prices. Yes. Everybody's going to be trying to that's get right. out at the same that's time. That's right. So you have the risk of delisting, and then, like you said, just the, the responsibility of having the having to justify to your client, whether it's an, an individual person or an institution, why did you invest in this? And if you can say then say, well, I thought the, the sales were gonna be good. And he says, well, what sales numbers did you use? Well, these here, then <laughs> are those trustworthy numbers? Not really. But I thought it was. I thought it would look good anyway. Yeah, it was. It was written in Chinese, but we got somebody who understands Chinese. It's not like it's not going to work. It's not exactly. going to fly. You know, even even if there's and part of the thing we talk about often, right, is granted, it could be that these Chinese listed companies do very well. Absolutely, it could be that their price increases because people still want to own them. They still think, well, I can't trust the the numbers, but I think they're going to make money anyway, so right. the stock price will go up. But as Jerry and I kind of talked about on Tuesday, that sounds more like speculation, Jerry told it, gambling. More like speculation and, but, and, and gambling. And you're right. Which is He's right. right. That's exactly what it is. It's more like gambling than investment because you're basically saying, I want to buy this company because I think other people will buy it and the price will go up. Not, I want to buy this company because I feel strongly that it is making a profit. And that's two very different things. Because the, the, the second one can no longer be verified at this point. Yes. You have to sort of just guess and say, well, I don't know if these numbers are accurate, but I think even if they're not accurate that this company is making a profit. And that's a very different scenario than what we've had in the past. Exactly. And, the, and what you have with companies listed on the U.S. from all the rest of the world, basically. And from most of the other nations in the world, <laughs> if you're getting the numbers, it has been audited by a third party. And you don't typically because that's how it's supposed to be. Saying, I'm going to audit, you know, that's my right. German Well, stocks. every company in, in let's say any company that's listed has to be and they have to allow the regulators of the U.S. to look at those numbers. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what's important, right? Exactly. And, you know, the other thing I was going to say was when you think about it, I always tell people, if you don't understand what a company is making, how they make their money, you mm -hmm. don't invest in it. And the second thing is, if you can't verify, right, that their numbers are truthful, you don't invest in it. It's very simple because in the end, it's not like there's, you know, there's, you know, 200 companies that you can invest in, right? And 100 you don't know about, the other 100 you do. There's thousands, right? So, so there's no need to invest in companies that you say, I really don't have a clue how what they make that? money, mm -hmm. right? 
And but you know, I, I assume that however they do it, whatever they do is good. It's no, great. that's not a good philosophy mm -hmm. to invest in a company. And I'm not saying that that company can't do extremely well. But as a personal investor, I would say I'm I'm not comfortable investing mm -hmm. when I don't know how they make money. And second, I'm definitely not comfortable investing when I don't know if their numbers are real. Mm -hmm. Right? And because so nobody's it verified. Is it's them. Managing your risk because I think oftentimes we're tempted. We're always tempted by return, right? Oh, I think this company will do well. I will therefore buy it. As opposed to the risk management piece, which is what kind of risk am I taking with purchasing the stock of a company that I don't understand or I don't know what they do or how they make money? And is that a risk that is appropriate for me? And a lot of times for most people, that's not a risk that is appropriate. And it doesn't mean and it, and you it couldn't make, be. it doesn't mean you couldn't make 100, 200% if things go right. Right. It just means that you're, you've made that 100%, you're taking a risk that you probably shouldn't have taken. And sometimes we take risks, I mean in life, we take risks that we shouldn't have and that pan out. And sometimes we take risks that we shouldn't have and, and don't, don't pan out. Exactly. And so the, but that doesn't mean that we should have taken the risk. Right. Right. So right. sometimes you have to just sit back and say, Yes, I'm, may I be foregoing an opportunity if everything goes my way to get a 100% return? Possibly. But the risk is not appropriate for me, given that I don't understand how this exactly. works or what exactly. this company is. I mean, yeah. that's one of the things we frequently talk about with the Bitcoins and the cryptocurrencies. We'll have people that will ask us, should I buy Bitcoin? And somewhere in the course of this conversation, usually 60 minutes later, how does it work? Like, what is a Bitcoin? Exactly. Is it an actual thing? And I'm like, if you don't know that a Bitcoin is not an actual coin, <laughs> then you should not That's be right. investing. Can I collect some of those coins? <laughs> in Bitcoin. Like, if you don't realize what it is, I hardly even know how the blockchain works. Right. But if you're sitting there thinking it's an actual coin. Again, it's, it's, you know, it's gambling. And, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with gambling. You just have to make sure that it's a very small portion of your net wealth, of what you have, exactly. of your assets. Because if you make it a large percentage and you're wrong, it's going to mm -hmm. be a long time you forget if that. If you back. wouldn't take ninety-eight percent of your money to Atlantic City to a casino, don't put ninety-eight percent of your money in a exactly. gambling on exactly. the stock market. Exactly. Yeah. I so I, I wanted to um, just one other thing. So before I got here early this morning, I saw that the uh, personal consumption numbers came out, right? Mm -hmm. And the personal consumption is really consumer spending, and it was interesting only because the consumer spending numbers were up eleven point um, eleven point three, eleven point eight percent. I can't remember the exact number, but over eleven percent year over year, year over which year. is an enorm enormous number. Mm -hmm. and, and let's remember that the consumer is the biggest part of our economy. So the question I have, um, and I actually tweeted that this morning, the question uh -huh. I have is, is obviously, oh, obviously the consumer is just dying to go out there, right? And the biggest numbers that came out of the consumer were clothing and dining out, mm -hmm. right? Because the consumer is tired of being home. Exactly. The question I have is how much does the stimulus have to do with that and are we going to continue to see that? And we'll, see we that. won't know, right? Mm -hmm. We won't know how that works out. Mm -hmm. But I just thought that the, the fact that you saw clothing, which is, you know, you got a little extra money is something that people like. Mm -hmm. They like to and get something that up. you do still see a lot of people buy by going out to do it. That's right. I, I mean, people, exactly. it's clothing purchased online is increasing, but not as rapidly That's as right. other yeah. things. You, you like I mean, to look at it, touch it, and it see must, how does it fit? Put it on. You know. Does it look good? <laughs> right. Um, but the dining, right? In other words, it, you know, again, mm -hmm. after 12 months being at home, right, where you can't go out, it's just the natural, right, inclination, inclination of people to just go out with their friends, mm -hmm. their family, and just go out to dinner, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're beginning to see. And, and again, hopefully that's what continues to grow. Exactly. And, yeah. and hopefully the, they're not, I don't know what the month over month was. Was it also positive? I didn't, it, it, didn't, it didn't give me that it number. Didn't come right. out yeah. Yet. Yeah. Month well, it did. I, just, I was just looking at the year number. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it'd be interesting to see going forward, do people keep spending despite the inflation increasing? Right. Or do people cut back and say, yeah. this is too expensive. I don't want to do this. I can't afford this right now. Or do people say, I, I don't care. Yeah, maybe this, this food at this restaurant is 10% more than it was last time I came here before the pandemic. I don't care. I right, want to go right. out and have a good time. Exactly. And I'm not going to worry. I'll worry later. <laughs> I think it'll have an impact eventually. But mm -hmm. right now, again, it's just uh, 
the demand for living life is greater than the risk of inflation, the of, inflation. of the fear of inflation that people have. Mm -hmm. Going forward, of course, we know that if inflation continues at the pace it's going on, people, people are going to say, I can't afford that anymore. So instead of going out you know, twice a week, I can only go out once a week or whatever mm -hmm. that number may be. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, I think little by little, it's, it's people are becoming comfortable going out and the question is, can we keep on the right track? Yes. And hopefully inflation truly proves uh, transient. Let's hope that, <laughs> you know, this is one time that I hope that every single Fed official, <laughs> including uh, the, the European officials are right. That All it's right. transitory, right? All I mean, right. It's one of the things is you, you can never tell. Even a broken clock <laughs> is right twice a day. So, <laughs> you said that. Even, that's usually I, my, my kind know, of line. That's usually okay. your kind of line with the Federal Reserve. But even a broken clock is right twice a day. Uh, oh, goodness. And, I mean, and speaking of going out, yeah. enjoying the beautiful weather that we've been having that's in right. Georgeville, enjoying good food, good times. We have uh, a guest with us today that I think her business really epitomizes that. That's it just right. looked, the pictures that I've been seeing on Facebook just look so peaceful. So fun, so beautiful. So we're really excited uh, to have on with us Stephanie Devara. She is the owner of Seaville Picnic. And Stephanie, so glad to have you with us here today. Hi, well, Stephanie. Hi, thanks for having me. That's a pleasure. It is, it is a pleasure. So, I mean, so for those who, who don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you started you know, such a, a unique business. Well, do you want the long story or the short one? Oh, How much time do I have? You did, we, got, we got 15 whole minutes. So you, can, you can give me the long story. Or the, yeah. And while you're at it, tell us, give people an idea of what Sivo Picnic does. I think it's pretty unique. Yeah, so um, I ended up losing my job due to COVID. I was actually working from home um, before COVID with my job, but got let, let go, so I had to kind of rethink things. Mm -hmm. And I'd always wanted to own my business. And I think, you know, sometimes we get comfortable. And that kind of gave me the extra push that I needed. Like, hey, it's now or never. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. and so many of my different experiences all of a sudden, like, came together. I came across the idea of luxury picnics in another uh -huh. state. Interesting. <laughs> and didn't get a chance to experience it myself. But when I came back to Charlottesville, I was like, oh, that would be a great date night for my husband and I. And then realized there wasn't one. <laughs> oh. So I'm like, okay, maybe that's what I need to do because I was looking at other kind of design-oriented things, but I kept on going back to, like, how does that set me apart from other people? And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to break into, like, say, for instance, home staging. There are still a good amount of established home stagers in the area, um, but uh, luxury picnics had a little bit of all of my talents. I, you know, had a background in design. Um, I did commercial and uh, residential design, and then also did a little bit of catering. Had, ran an Airbnb for a short time, okay. too, so I had customer service experience. Mm -hmm. So everything came together, and it just, I couldn't stop thinking about it. So my husband and I were supposed to get married in 2020, and so we had had to move our date out, <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, it was at Valley Road Vineyards. And I oh, brought place. yes, I brought the idea because you know after having to talk to them so much about changing the dates, they almost you know became like family as well too. <laughs> we were constantly <laughs> they you know there, <laughs> like once things were opening up. So I was like, hey, can I set up a luxury picnic here? You know, and they were very encouraging about it, and I had a great like supportive. Uh, my husband's super supportive friends, but they would tell me like if I was going down the wrong path and I was crazy too. So it's a great, you know, great <laughs> friends and family to have. And so then I, it gave me the encouragement after talking to Valley Road um, about reaching out to other vineyards. Told I okay. reached out to Eastwood. They were just starting out too. And they were happy to have me as well, and it just kept on growing from from there. from there of having locations and sl slowly starting everything. Like I knew, I'm like, okay, I can't do every all my ideas all mm -hmm. at once. You know, being having an artistic background, sometimes you go down the rabbit hole of like doing way too much. <laughs> yep, I'm like, right, how right. can I streamline this? I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have two different looks. A like just ongoing yearly look, and then a seasonal look that will come out. Mm -hmm. 
So really kind of streamlined the process and then also figured out what I didn't want to take on, what other local partners, especially during COVID, that I could help support as mm -hmm. well to and add something special to the picnics as well. For them, awesome. Yeah. And I love the <laughs> idea of like filling the demand need by saying, I wanted this, I couldn't find it, so I'll just provide that's it right. myself. That's right, no, that's perfect, exactly. It's like the perfect yeah. fulfilling of, of a need. I'm, I'm super interested, so like, could you sort of take us through the process of someone calls Seagull Pit and says, mm -hmm. I'd love to do one of these picnics. What does it look like? What do you prepare for them? Because I've seen the pictures of the result, yeah. and they just look beautiful. But they I'm, do, I, they do. But first thing in my mind was, how do you even do all that? Like, how do you prepare and put all this together? So what does it look like from the perspective of someone comes to you and says, I'd love to do a luxury picnic for a date night or mm -hmm. for an important event. Sure. So I've worked out a schedule with all the vineyards that I've partnered with and so that they know when I'm coming, when to expect me to make sure there's no weddings or any other events mm -hmm. that are going to be conflicting. And then depending on the location too, sometimes there's a VIP location. It might be where they have typically have their weddings. It might be in the vine. So just making sure that they know that they're not going to be spraying chemicals or something like that while we're there <laughs> or have the sprinklers on. Um, so if someone um, gives me a date, I, we have a specific vineyard that we're at that day. And usually okay. it is two hour uh, window that they'll get to enjoy their picnic. And we bring everything from the low table, pillows, blankets, rugs, um, all the table setting, the wine glasses, and also a uh, charcuterie board. Oh, yeah. so do, okay. do you okay. prepare the yes. food all yourself? Too? I do so the you, you I do the charcuterie, yes. Nice. Um, but we also partner with Totally Baked, and she does my cupcakes. And um, we also provide uh, fresh flowers sometimes, too, if someone wants that. Um, otherwise, usually we just add our own decorations to it. Mm -hmm. But they can add on tent, umbrella, a bunch of other like fun add-ons, too, to make their day special. Oh, now, do do you have like a, a a menu that hears the choices, or does the person say, "I want to have you know you know caviar, or I want to have uh, <laughs> you know, tacos"? No I mean, yeah, no. Usually, it's just seasonal. So unless oh, okay. they have mm -hmm. some type of allergy or gluten intolerance, too, we try to um, cater cater to them. Okay. But otherwise, yeah. <laughs> oh, very funny. Imagine someone says, "Can I have the little sandwiches with no crust?" <laughs> my little tea set on my picnic. If if someone did request that, I might be willing to cut off the crust for them. Maybe. It depends on how busy we're the day. <laughs> Maybe. Exactly. So, like, what what are some of the events you typically see people doing in um, the area? What yeah. are the most common ones, or ones that, or any unique ones that stood out to you? Well, so it was interesting last year. Um, the first picnic started in September of last year. Officially went into business July of last mm -hmm. year, and then September was the first one booked. And it was definitely more popular for couples for anniversaries. We had okay. proposals. We had one one on a cold, blistery day in beginning of December. Wow. But they didn't <laughs> seem to mind. They were blissfully in love and did not care how windy it <laughs> and cold it was or that, that some of the ash from the fire pit was blowing on them. But they were super happy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great time. It's a great time. Yeah. But this year, uh, bachelorette parties have been super popular. Oh, wow. Um, I did a baptism, a bridal shower. So definitely the larger events are coming into play now mm -hmm. that people can gather together but definitely it's still popular though for for dates and proposals there's a proposal coming up next month that i'm excited about <laughs> uh, those those must be a yeah. lot of fun to yeah. set that up because it's like it's so so memorable mm -hmm. and when i coordinate with uh, local photographers as well too to capture the moment uh, so you I joke that all, like the guy, all he needs is the yes and the ring, and we'll take care of everything else. <laughs> <laughs> the yes, especially. Yeah. The photographer's yeah. not much use. Yes. You just hope she says yes. Otherwise, it's if as you, I said, without the yes, yeah, without the photographer the yes, sitting there, like, what do uh -oh. I take a picture of? I mean, <laughs> no, she still has the picnic at least to take a picture. Yeah, so right. you know, at least I'll get some marketing She's pictures. Not really ready. <laughs> yeah, some, some marketing photos <laughs> for the business. Uh, oh, we got some comments coming in. So Nicholas says, uh, knowing what not to take on is uh, one of the hardest parts of owning your business. So great insight there, um, he says. And then that's true. That's we have. That's, I, that's I, always I know the case. I saw another one here. Oh, look at this. Uh, Kathy Frankerville Bellera says, all the way from New York, says, a great idea, beautiful design. <laughs> so you got, you've definitely got some, some fans here coming up. Maybe so we can start one in New York. 
Who knows? You never know. I have family, I in, I have family in New York. Yeah, really? family. Yeah. Where, where in New York? <laughs> um, Long Island and upstate New York as Long well. Long Island. Uh, that's that's where we're from. I know. So. Notice how I said Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know my parents were New Yorkers. <laughs> New Yorkers, absolutely. So any, because I know you've, you meant, you touched on a little bit, like there's the artistic side of what your talents are and what you're able to do. And then, of course, there's the entrepreneur side of like, oh, my God, I have to run a business. I have to do this. I have to make sure this works. Any advice just from your experience in the last year, I mean, starting a business in, this, in a tough environment, any advice for any aspiring entrepreneurs that may be saying, oh, I have this, this idea and this talent, and I want to turn it into a business, just from your experience, challenges that you ran into, um, great tips you were given mm -hmm. that you might want to share? Yeah. So I think I think my entrepreneur spirit definitely came from my dad, and then even my husband, his mom and grandma are very strong business-minded oh, entrepreneurs. Nice. So having that support network initially, but if you don't have that, there's so many great resources in Charlottesville mm -hmm. that you can don't be afraid to reach out to those. There's That's Boss true. Babes if you want to lean on all of the fellow like babes in the area. <laughs> boss Babes. Yes, yes. Um, that's a Facebook group, but now mm -hmm. they've started meeting in person as well, too. But um, even, like, Virginia has a lot of resources for um, people starting out businesses. So I think if you just do even a Google search initially to see, you know, someone that you can lean on onto to mm -hmm. get the advice, get the support, run ideas past someone that you can trust. And I think, yeah, even if you you have a smart business minded friend too, that can just kind of be your sounding board in in the middle and mm -hmm. tell you when you're not going down the right <laughs> path. Right. Exactly. Or, uh, what are you crazy? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to end up being like on American Idol where you know you're a bad singer <laughs> and no one exactly. told you. And no one mentioned this beforehand. Yeah. Why didn't someone tell me that this was a crazy idea? But in this day. Not, not so crazy. So, I mean, what would you say is just thinking ahead? Some like next steps for where to, where do you see this going? What are some things maybe you haven't done yet that you're mm -hmm. that you're thinking about for Seville Pitnick? I mean, of course, you know, I, I go back to thinking about franchising. That would be great, mm -hmm. but I also want to make sure that everything is established right. really well yeah, and that it's of fine-tuned like working wheel and that it doesn't end up not being the true in intent and the spirit and mm -hmm. nature, but I mean, even an event space or something, you know, something that right. not only is it picnics, but it's also supporting other industries as well mm -hmm. too, with like having available props or just having available like, you know, setups. And yeah, I think it could go in a couple of different mm -hmm. directions, but I think now it's just really focusing on, on um, you know, keep on building what I started. Mm -hmm, the painted party. Yeah. Out of curiosity, what happens if like, it's, it is like a, it's a rainy day? Oh, usually the, reschedule. Like, yeah, reschedule. We, we, we do have a tent. A few spaces have indoor areas, so if someone's open mm -hmm. to still setting up, which can still be super cool so, inside as well, too. Yeah. Okay, so even even like if like oh, it has to be this day, you get that like thunderstorm coming yeah. through. Yeah, if it's light, uh -oh. if it's light rain, I mean we have a tent that we can put over yeah, so they can still enjoy. If it gets worse than that, then we can always you know yeah. re reschedule. <laughs> reschedule it. That, no, that makes that makes Absolutely. total sense. Yeah. It's just like you want the sunny weather and the beautiful. I mean, would you say that people do they ever want like music or other activities that are there or is it mostly just we just want to sit and relax? I have mostly just that? been enjoying like yeah. sitting and relaxing yeah. but like even like at Eastwood uh, where we set up on the terrace it it overlooks the um, outdoor tasting tent and a lot of times there's live bands so the music uh, drifts up so it's even you know more peaceful but that they still have their little private area. Exactly. That yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just the thought of that, like, just the peaceful nature of it, just mm -hmm. seeing the, the pictures and the beautiful props, I have to say, they're, the things that you put into it with the, the blankets. They're stunning, yes. The, they're stunning. I mean, they look like, they look like something out of one of those movies where, like, the English used to go to have their <laughs> pictures <laughs> right, out up. on their lawns, and I'm like, 
this looks like you're trying out one of those BBC movies. Yeah, I mean, I try to do everything that I would enjoy doing and put myself like into the customer's shoes. Are they going to be comfortable? Is like everything the right height? <laughs> and you know, everything that they have. If if I start noticing something's like off, I'm going to change it and make sure that things photograph well, that look nice in person too. Exactly. Exactly. So. Before I let you know, where can people find you? Where's, what's the best way to get in touch with you, to, to find Seville Picnic, to contact you? Our best um, is my website on SeavillePicnic.com. SeavillePicnic.com. Yep. We have our calendar right now. Um, we're about to post our fall calendar soon. But if okay. they have a date in mind, we are booking by appointment until it's posted. Okay, nice. Also, oh, when you go on there, you can. There's a whole calendar that you can you choose, just from. Mm-hmm. choose from. Yep. Pick wow. you want. Yep. That's they fantastic. can pick um, the vineyard they want, and then oh. it'll show the available dates uh, at that vineyard. Okay. And Dang. then they can add all their add-ons. So definitely starting out, trying to utilize all of having extra hands working for you, I think is key because you know there's only so many hours in the day, <laughs> exactly. and there's only so many means too, <laughs> and so I think. You know, seeing finding a good system that works for your business is like key. I agree, uh, absolutely, hundred percent, absolutely. And that's just an awesome way to do it because I mean, very super easy. That's so right. They say, "Here's the vineyard I want. Here's the mm-hmm. date I want, and here's all the things." Yeah, yeah. 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 people that they go research a little of the vineyard. I like it. Boom. What's yeah. the date? I mean, sometimes there's done. some questions, but for the most part, it helps out with the majority of reservations. Yeah. And then, you know, usually proposals, they do reach out to make us a little bit more involved, <laughs> a little bit more nerves involved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little more, I, I need this to be perfect <laughs> mentality. But that is, that is awesome. That's such a, it is. to be honest, I didn't even know before Nick connected us with you, I didn't even know that this was a thing. Me neither. I'm going to be right? honest. I, maybe because there wasn't one in charge, but <laughs> now there is. But I was like, what do you mean? Like, you set up. Picnic, picnic, huh? I mean, that actually happens but then having seen it it just looks so amazing so really excited to have it here and so so excited and happy that you were able to join us oh, today thank you awesome. thank you Stephanie this happy is fantastic to be here. That's, that's awesome thank you <laughs> so much that was that was a lot of fun yeah just so you know it's because I was thinking I remember when I was um, a little boy and we used to go to uh, Jones Beach right mm-hmm. and and we used to go usually like Sunday morning and that whole Sunday morning, early church, come home, and I see my mother setting everything up because she used to make like these big empanadas and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's like it was like tons and tons of <laughs> things that we were carrying into the car, you know, the food, the drinks, and everything. And of course, the problem with Jones Beach was that by the time you get from the parking lot to the beach, the sand, literally, it's a it's a good 15, 20 minute walk, Whoa. right? And so you, you, we get there early so we can be close. I tell you, those walks. But of course, then you enjoy the food and everything. And but imagine having somebody, not at the beach, but having somebody say, we'll take care of all yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. You this just have great. to show up exactly. and enjoy the picnic. Exactly. You don't have to worry Absolutely. about the rest of it. Absolutely. Yeah. That is yeah. awesome. So that was good. That was good. Oh, we yeah. got some more comments coming in as we transition from, uh, from Stephanie to Samantha. We're gonna, they're going to swap seats uh, here as we do. We've got uh, Rosalia, the Rosalia Tordaro from uh, now. She's in New York. Oh, she's in now. New York. Okay. Um, she's saying, uh, hope we don't stop it in so we can enjoy life and help the business and the economy. We said, yes, Rosalia. I agree we, wholeheartedly. We the same way. Let's keep things going. Move forward. Keep I got to move forward. That's keep right. Keep things going and enjoy the, the beautiful summer. The w- summer, the fall, here. life in general, Just even life winter, in general. even winter. I mean, mm-hmm. out there in the cold and having the fire pit and the dust blowing on you, that's okay, too. If, if it's the right people and the right... Absolutely. Uh, and the good if you're food, hugging good. the person you love, it's got to be fun, right? It's got to be fun. Exactly. You know, and, and so many things, especially now this time of year to do. And one of the places where there's so many different things to do is Stonefield. That's and right. So we're, we're really excited to be joined by uh, Samantha Strawn. She is the manager of the stops at Stonefield. And Samantha, thanks so much for joining us today. Hello, Thank Samantha. Thank you all so much for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Oh, we're, we're glad I'm surprised you even have time to come here. I mean, when I think of Stonefield, I said, holy cow, wait a minute. She well, runs Stonefield. That's a very <laughs> valid thing to think. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a busy time, but we love that. Listening yeah, to all of the conversation, mm-hmm. conversations you all have been having. It's been such a great time coming out of COVID sure, and sure. seeing all the clothing and the dining mm. and all the shopping that's yeah. happening. We love that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly absolutely. I mean, for those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself and what your role is as the, as the manager of the shops. That's probably the number one question that I get is what do you 
do exactly? That's a great question. So, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I yeah, hope I phrased it better. No, that's fine. <laughs> it's a le- it's a very legitimate question, and it's it's every day is different. So I joke and I say, just when I think I can explain, then uh-huh. everything changes, and I'm doing something else. I'm like, oh, well, then there's that too. So, mm-hmm. um, so I had a long career in hospitality, and so when I was uh, looking for a new opportunity, uh, this role came up. My predecessor uh, retired. We were friends and. Um, we were a- I was able to interview and transition into this role in uh, property management, which has been really fun in my hospitality career and working with people and customer service and operations, and that world has come very much into play here. Mm-hmm. So the best way I can describe what I kind of do on a day-to-day basis is I um, my company owns the property and I work okay. for them to oversee the outside of the buildings is basically the best way I can explain okay. it. So I make sure everything is running well on the outside. The shops are, are responsible. They take care of the inside. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And I take care of the outside. So that can be anything from speed bumps to landscaping to roofing to okay. then it gets into marketing and social mm-hmm. media and newsletters and things like that. So it's a very broad I'm never bored. <laughs> There's That's never good. a moment where I'm bored in my day. <laughs> so that, that is, I mean, don't want to... So when you say social media, so you are marketing also for the stores and everything that's going on, and do they reach out to you, or do, or do you know about it? How does that work? Yes, to all of that. Okay, so it's, all right. it's just, it's a, it's a machine that just kind of runs. If, if the shops need anything, um, I always make myself available to them. I've, I've shopped at Stonefield long mm. before this role. Um, so a lot of them, I, I knew quite a few of them already just from being in their stores. Mm-hmm. So when I took this on, it was a really natural transition. So I already had some friends um, and they know that they can come to me if they need anything or if they're promoting anything. And then also um, I try to come up with kind of unique ideas. They're great at coming up with unique ideas and coming Mm. together to do some things and um, so yeah so I just try and help them and if I have ideas they'll give me material like for newsletters and things so it's just a it's just a really good relationship what what would you say is the the major attraction right now of Stonefield and obviously you I mean is is the hotel part of that too? The Still hotel is we're we're together. Okay. Um so yes, so the hotel and also a lot of people don't realize that we Town Center is what we're known for, which is of course where we were talking earlier about Trader Joe's and right. The, right. the theater and the hotel, but we also have the north side of property. So that's um BJ's, Jared's, European oh, Wax, oh, Mission oh, Barbecue, okay, so by Costco. all of Costco, oh, all of that area okay, is okay. also oh. part of Stonefield as well. So okay. a lot of people don't realize that it's all together. We're just we just have a little break um, in there, so we're all together in that. And so we're doing a lot right now to try and bring everyone um, together and to to have it seen as a whole. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, so we have a lot of we have a lot of pieces. Absolutely, that that is that is amazing. Oh, you got already. We've got a comment coming in. Oh, Brad Strong, is that your husband? He <laughs> yes. says, "Tell her Connor says you were doing great, Mama." Fantastic. So you you have some major fans <laughs> watching. Thank That's you for number watching. That's right? number one fan. I suspect. Number one Hopefully, hopefully, one if fan. all is right, um, hopefully my husband and my son at least they tuned in to see me. So thanks. <laughs> so, hey, it's important for the number one fans to, to tune in. Um, the one thing I wanted to ask you about, so we've been, I've been talking with uh, Jerry on the I Love Sheba flagship show mm-hmm. uh, just a couple times because, of course, the, there were major news with the Fashion Square Mall and yes. that being sold to the, the lender originally and just thinking a lot about the future yeah. of what malls in America, because that's more of your traditional mall where you go there, you go inside, exactly. and everything's in there. And Stonefield just has so many of the outdoor areas different things. So just what do you kind of see as the future of the mall experience in America globally or just how you see it? Are there going to be things that you think change even from what Stonefield looks like today or just your thoughts on it being a part of this? That's a loaded yeah. question. Holy cow. That is a loaded question. That's a big he's, question. He's tough. Ooh, he's tough. Okay, Holy. let me think about it. No, <laughs> I do, I think if anything, during 2020, I think um, having one of the benefits of having an outdoor mall Mm -hmm. um, came about last year. So you still had the space, even when things were closed down, we loved seeing... um, 
the, my, my predecessor, Victoria, uh, she would tell me about how there would still be people out running or okay. running up and down the steps of Regal oh, yeah, or yeah. setting out on the green area. So it gave people this outdoor space. So I think for us um, at Stoneville, it's all about being creative. Mm -hmm. uh, you really have to, because you were talking about people are shopping online right now. Like that's a big thing. But also who wants to shop online anymore, right? Like who yeah. wants to eat dinner Absolutely. in their kitchen or watch a movie in their living room? Like now we're lucky that we're getting to that part right. where mm -hmm. everybody wants to go out and have that interaction again. Um, but it did make us start to realize the benefit, I think, of having that outdoor experience mm -hmm. where you can go out and you can walk around. And, and that's really, I think, where we're hoping to get creative with kind of our branding and what we're doing is what ways can we bring people in that's maybe not even geared and, and sold towards shopping? And mm -hmm. like, let's, let's get people to Stonefield to see what we have and right. who we are and what's available mm -hmm. and just come and spend the day. And because we do have so many things like the theater, all the shopping, right. the restaurants, the hotel, there's so many different pieces there. And it's such a beautiful, I know I'm very biased, but it's such a beautiful place to be. So it's a beautiful place to be able to walk around and just explore and have a really good time with friends and family. And you're in that outdoor marketplace feel. Mm -hmm. um, so we've started to get a little more creative when it comes to especially using that green space. Yes. The one up there. That's right. So our green space, we've gotten really creative with that over this summer. Um, I wanted to use that as a way, I, I do a lot of different nonprofits. I work with a lot of different nonprofits in town and I'm on a few different committees and we wanted, I wanted to find a way that we could use that to give back. And I said, that's the most important thing about anything that I've done is how can I utilize this role to give back to this community that's been so wonderful to me. And our shops feel the same way. This community has been, I mean, we, I think we were talking earlier too. We have Trader Joe's, we have LLB, and we have those big names. That's right. We also have a lot of local, yeah. amazing local mm -hmm. shops. Whimsy, Splendora's mm -hmm. just reopened um, as the summer was there, kicking oh, off that, with that us. Would be fun. Um, Culture Vibes just had their opening. We have so many amazing shops with us that are local. So we really want to highlight all of that and mm -hmm. get some people to come and see what's there now. So our Friday night music has been really great. We focus on a different nonprofit every week. This Friday, it's Bennett's Village. Um, and then we partner them with a band. So I take care oh. of kind of the logistics. So we have a band play, but the focus really is on this nonprofit that's doing this amazing work in the community and have people come out to enjoy a relaxing time and find out how to get involved. And that's been the big piece of just, and it's more of just creativity. What can we do to, to let people see who we are? No, and, and that's perfect. Experience. Yeah, that's perfect. Because and it's an when, experience. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> and, and when you think about it, when you have a mall like that, right, and you have these local stores and you have obviously the, the top brand stores also, what you're trying to do is bring people in, and it's not just bring them in so they go shopping. Bring them in, let them walk around, and let them say, oh, I didn't even know this store was here, or let me go into this store and see what it's all about. You have to bring the people, so yeah. that's a perfect way. That's, a, that's it's fabulous. It's just a more, it's a more, I just, dynamic experience, just, I want to go to the shore, stop, leave. Right. right. It's no, I want to go to Stonefield. I want to walk around. I want to see this. That's I want to it. maybe I'll stop in there. I'll have dinner here. And you, before you know it, you're there three hours. That's right. Exactly. A time. Exactly. Just spending time there. Already that's, we already got. That's been our main focus is there's so many things to do from the elements. You have yoga. I mean, there's so many different pieces. You could really spend your whole day. Yeah getting everything you need done at Stonefield. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. More comments coming in. Brian Harris says, uh, Samantha Strawn is amazing. Keep <laughs> rocking it at Stonefield. Thanks for all you do for our community. So I'm Thank giving you, Brian. Bad piece. Shout out to the Ark of the Piedmont. So that's Brian's, Ark of the Piedmont. That's Brian's nonprofit. So love those guys. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> and, and Kathy from New York says, uh, I would rather go to an outdoor mall um, it's a beautiful setting. Wish New York would have a few more of those. <laughs> I, I sympathize with you, Kathy. I sympathize. Um, so wonder, did you design the? Did you guys design the outdoors of how Pottery Barn looks? Just she said it looks beautiful. I guess she's been checking it out. Oh, uh, so Ooh. actually, the there was a different company, a different management company that actually built Stonefield. So um, O'Connor Property Management, who I work for, they have just taken over in the past. 
well, I'm going to, they're probably watching. I'm not going to get this right because I'm new, but um, five, six years, they just took over. So all of the basic design was mm -hmm. actually was a different there. management. Okay. We, okay. It was already there when we took over. But you guys are upkeeping it beautifully. That's so our goal. Still, Good. I'm glad to hear that. Sometimes that's... I forget how old it is because it always looks new. No, that's right. It looks that's right. New. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that because that's a big part of my job. Oh, to so that's good to good. hear. <laughs> and, and I mean, it's nice to get everything back going. Hopefully that movie theater because when you think about it also, people, you know, it's like, okay, let's go to movies. But before the movies, well, one week we'll have dinner, right? Yeah. Or after the movies, let's go have so an ice cream or options. let's walk around. So that whole, you know, the whole area with the movie theater and the little stores and the green area is, is just perfect because you can you can do something more than just go to movies and leave, right? Exactly. Just, you can make it that, like I said, the, the longer yeah. experience there. Because, I mean, there's nothing like dinner in a movie. So now that you've got the movie back, you can do the dinner in a movie. Exactly. Together exactly. at one point. Quick thing about Regal that a lot of people don't know that they brought back this summer. Um, we were so excited when they came back and they reopened. It's been, it's been so successful. They're doing a great mm -hmm. job. Um, but they're also on Tuesday and Wednesday mornings. They're doing dollar movies for the kids again. So it's a oh, children's movie okay. every Tuesday and Wednesday morning. It's different movies each week. So I have to give a quick shout for that because it's such a fun thing that they're doing in the community for the kids. And that is awesome. I mean, especially when summer vacation. Now that summer vacation is here for the kids. I mean, That's yeah. right. Take them. To I got to see what movies. I, I like children's. Yeah, to be honest, I, I like some of those They're really good for movies. For a dollar, I <laughs> If there's like some classic Disney movies, I'm, sure. I'm in. I mean, for a dollar, I'll, I'll, I'll go there in the morning and do it. Just as a personal and professional question, anything you would love to see like come to Stonefield in the future that, that's not there, but I, oh, I would love it if, if there would be a business like this that would, that would come here. That's so funny. I have always been really happy with, like I said, I shopped there long mm -hmm. before I had this job. We moved, my husband and I moved here in 2014, okay. and we moved to one of the apartment complexes um, right, ac right. right oh, on right. hydraulics. Okay, yeah. right. So yeah. we found Daniel with Crate and Marrow right away, and that's where, that's been our dog supply store ever <laughs> since. Yep. So it's funny, um, I've had so many people that have brought up different ideas to me like oh what about a container store what about and like people have told have had all of these ideas but now that we're starting to see new leases being signed and new shops being mm -hmm. um, getting ready to open I'm so excited about the ones that we have coming that I I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't know, because I'm so excited about these that are coming on board. Like like I said, this past month, we um, Culture Vibes, a local shop, just opened with us. So excited to have them, and I see all the stuff that he's doing in the community and in, in his store. We have um, one of the big things a lot of our shops are excited about is Torchy's Tacos is going to be coming. Um, it's in Austin, so that's one that oh, is going uh. to be coming in the – future um mm -hmm. there we're working on getting that space ready now so there's so many exciting things coming that i'm like oh i don't even know what i would want your I'm, checklist has already been i'm like i'm already out. excited about what's <laughs> happening so i can't think of anything off that i honestly back to kind of what we were saying i think we have a little something we have such a nice variety mm -hmm. of different shops that i think we check a lot if not all of the boxes on what's going on Absolutely no, it is. especially now with Rito back. I'm a bit. Yes, we're big movie Maybe, yeah. superhero no. movie guys, but Rito back is like okay. That's the key. Okay, yes. we're gonna be and there so much more often. And you can't see a superhero movie oh, in your not. living room. No. It's no. not this. You've got no. Black Widow has to be at Regal. You know, no, absolutely. You have exactly. to go to a the big sound, theater. The sound, the action, it's exactly. gotta be big. You know, when you put it in a small TV, it's just not the same. It's not, it's the, not the same. It's like I'll pay. The extra right. to go and yeah. see that, to know yeah. have a real I mean, experience. Come on. Watching Wonder movie. Woman on a little TV, it's, it's no good. It's no good. Got to watch her in big, big screen. You're a big fan, a big Wonder Woman fan here, <laughs> for, for sure. <laughs> any other, before we let you know, any other like upcoming events or things going on at Stonefield that you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah, so um, check out, I always tell everyone, go to the website and our social mm -hmm. media. We update constantly, but every single Friday from 5 to 7, it's a different nonprofit and a different band. Oh, wow. The, mm -hmm. So I go on and look and you can see which one it is. Like I said, mm -hmm. this Friday coming up is Bennett's Village. And we also have, it's a UVA band, um, I'm probably going to mispronounce it, 
Theocles and the Scruffs. Wow. Um, they're incredible. That's a tough, they sit, that's that's a tough, a tough one, one to say. It's, I know. I, they didn't make it <laughs> easy like on me Greek. this My week. Brother, they probably know how to pronounce it. It sounds Greek. <laughs> but we're so excited to have them come and play. So we're doing that every Friday. My goal is... Um, I've kind of started small again. I just I just took over this role in December. So we're I'm hoping to build to where we can have a different event each weekend. Okay. Um, we've been partnering a lot with Craft Seaville, which we love. I love that group. They're going to bring back some markets um, going into the holidays. Cool. So they're going to bring back some craft markets that are Very so nice. popular with us. So we're going to have that going That's on. Good. Um, and then Howls, the um, the local nonprofit that works with dogs, um, they're going to be doing an event. They're going to bring back another um, market event that they do. And then we're right now. My big thing that I'm really excited to two things are a Halloween event. Um, hopefully, we're going to move into that. So a trick or treating event, and then a um, tree lighting kind of a Christmas event. Uh, we are bringing back Tinsel Trail this year with the Junior League, where they had the Christmas trees oh, around the nice. green. Okay. Um, so we're really excited to plan something big with the Junior League um, to kick off the holiday season too. So we have some things in the works coming up. We're That's excited. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So much. I, I love that. Absolutely. And I love That's good to know. Theme. It's just yeah, you get it to is. go. It is. So is it, by going, you're there's something that is you pay for the band and then it supports the nonprofit or how does how actually do you support them? there is no charge at all to come. So there no is way. zero charge to come. The nonprofit each week will do different things. I I have no a joke that I don't have rules. My rules are very <laughs> straightforward um, and and not not. Mm-hmm intense um but the nonprofit just shows up and they do different things i know bennett's village has a lot of vendors that are coming in that they're going to be selling and doing give backs uh, some of our shops do give back splendora's is a great example kendra scott noodles mm-hmm. and company they do give backs to the nonprofit that's there each week um so one of our nonprofits that we supported was Elk Hill School locally, yep. the Elk Hill School. Um, they We partnered with UVA clubs. They actually did a school supply drive for them, oh, and we okay. wound up getting a van load of school supplies for the teachers. And so so each week it's kind of – it's a little different, um, but you don't have to pay anything to come. But when you're there, there may be different ways that you can support. Um, foster families is another one that we support. So we had people places. Uh, we have community attention foster families that's, that are going to be coming, they're looking for people to sign up just to learn more yeah. about being foster right. parents. Right. So each week it's a that's little different awesome. depending on what the needs mm-hmm. of the nonprofit are. That's amazing. So each that's yeah, really just good. being there, you just can support Just being there, them. you're supporting them. Exactly. In, in, exactly. in numerous ways. You can find and you're learning ways. about them. And sometimes there's a lot of nonprofits you don't even know exist. Exactly. That's you the goal. find out ones you didn't know yeah. were there. Fantastic. You know, uh, Dan Jensen from North Carolina says, you all are terrific. <laughs> Thank so, you. Thank you, Dan. So thank you, Dan, for watching. North Carolina, <laughs> wow. From North Carolina, but we are a national, nationwide show. A nationwide show here. <laughs> uh, Samantha, thank you so much. Thank you for so much for having this me. Been, this has been awesome. This has been educational, too. This a is lot wonderful. I've learned so much <laughs> yeah. about how it works and just all the, the awesome things that you can do to support both Stonefield and all the nonprofits that, that you're working yeah. with. Exactly. Thank really you. Really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Uh, very. This was good. Yeah, this, this two is, really awesome. Like I said, it's nice today. when you have one. It's a, it's a great guest, right? Mm-hmm. Vibrant guest that we had. But also when you learn a little something, right? Exactly. Because sometimes you just don't even know. You know, yeah, who's running Stonefield? How does that work? Yeah. But everything that goes in behind the scenes and what they're doing, mm-hmm. I think it's great to be the put work it out that there. In yeah. whatsoever. And I'm excited for what's coming. I'm glad. I used to do. Sometimes I would go to Splendora's and the downtown mall, have a little live stream. Sometimes. So the fact that it's back, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. Ice cream. Yeah, ice cream. Go. I'm a bit ice cream. So now I can do uh, with my dates. I can do dinner, dinner, a movie, movie, and wow. ice cream. Shush. I can do three things, and I did be or here. even Friday. There some, might be some music. Exactly. Right. There might be some music. Exactly. And ice cream. Exactly. And ice cream. And ice cream has to be part. And ice cream. That's really my <laughs> my extra draw there. It's like music and ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> so, but, but that's inside and new outdoor place. Yeah, L- looking fun. forward. That's going to be awesome. I think, especially now, talk about so many exciting things not to do there with uh, 
with themes opening up and more and more people going out. So you definitely have your opportunities here in Charlotte. And this is the right time of season, right? Summer, year, fall. Summer, fall. Like even winter. Even I mean, winter, I mean, I, when you I, do, I can You know, I love Christmas. So I mean, the, the idea to see Christmas tinsel. lights and tinsel, oh, man, that's... That's going to be awesome. Yeah, that really brings up the spirit in, in, in Xavier. I, just, I, just, I can imagine. I can imagine. And it his wife, does. Jan. I mean, she yeah. Loves, yeah. Mom loves My Christmas. My mom is a huge Christmas fan. So, so I'll, have to, I'll, have to, I'll have to drag her there. Oh, my God. She has to the other way around. <laughs> other way around. She'll be like, let's go enjoy the Christmas. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, a super fun show today. This one's wonderful. As always. I mean, next week is going to be a lot of fun, too. We already know we have our guests for next Oh, we do? Okay. For next week. Yeah, we're going to be so joined. So there's no surprises. Nick no is surprises. Because yeah, Nicholas no, is the one that gets his most. spare you, okay. Nick. Coming in at short notice and being like, oh, "No, I enjoyed that. That was good." Guest I, was Nick. I loved having I, Nick the here. The audience liked him. I have to say, I don't know why, but they did. <laughs> so I mean, it, he was very impressive. Um, but uh, next week, yeah, Nikki Hastings from Seaville Biohub is okay. going to join us. So they bring together a lot of the biotech companies. Oh, that's companies right. That's right. Okay, here I, remember in that. I remember that. And then the father and son duo from Ruiz Landscaping. Oh, that would be fun. Is going to That'd join be us. interesting. So that's going to be yeah. a blast from where we're going to get to meet Ruiz, Ruiz. Landscaping. It's going to be a lot of fun. So a blast next week. I just thought it was a blast this week. Exactly. So every, every day is fun on today, manana, <laughs> basically. <laughs> today is fun and manana is fun. Exactly. And shout out. So if you're... If you can stand a double dose of Alex and David to Twitch shout out, we're going to be on Real Talk with the amazing Keith Smith That's and right. Gary Miller tomorrow. We've Same been blessed network. that he asked us on. We were, we were really we'll humbled what that, he, that he asked us on. Because it's, um, he, I mean, he and Jerry are awesome. They are. On that show. It's exactly. such, a, such a super informative but funny show. That's right. Like you watch it and you're like, I'm learning so much. But I'm actually also having a great time. Because that's the, the, it's their personality. It's the personality. Right? It's just, it's like just, Keith it, is such a great storyteller. Oh. Jerry just always has the charisma. And, that's right. And the I mean, you put New York. So, I mean, if you detain the three New Yorkers, born <laughs> Keith from New York, you raised in New York, me born in New York, if you can handle that. And then, then Jerry to top great, it all off. Jerry to top it all off. Then you're going to have a, a great show, which I think it's going to be fantastic. It's going to so be wonderful. we're really excited to be honest. That's 10 15. Tomorrow. You can always catch 10 Real Talk, 10.15, exactly. tomorrow morning on every the I Seville Network. It's on every Friday. I think also every Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. And, and yep, so it's going to be a lot of fun to be on, on the show tomorrow. And so, of course, always want to thank our sponsors, Emergent Financial Services, Cristel Noel, State Farm Agency, and uh, Forward Adelante, the premier Latino networking group here in Charlottesville, Virginia. Always want to thank I Love Seville. Judah for being behind always, the camera always and, and helping us helping this show run smoothly and just uh, really excited and of course you our audience thank you so much for watching us because they would wouldn't be here without that's you right all. absolutely so we really appreciate the leaders the Dan's the Kathy's the, the Connors everyone who watched us today we, we, we love you all you're you, you all make this you. show show possible so be sure to share with your friends let people know if you've asked us any questions, forward us questions, if you anything you want us to talk about on the show next week, and we will certainly read them aloud and, and talk about them. Exactly. We so will. Thanks, thanks once again for joining us. And until next time, hasta mañana.